A lot of gamers tinker with the settings of their games. Some settings can be used to make a game way better, but some of them make it worse. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 PC game settings you need to turn off now. Starting off at number 10, if there's one thing PC players hate, it's motion blur. Pretty much every game has it, and there's a ton of people out there who don't want it. Uh, motion blur, used correctly, can add the impression of movement to things, and that's great for stuff like racing games, but a lot of games do go overboard with it. In third person games, it's not always bad because at least you got a nice wide FOV, but in first person it can actually make people sick. Some developers go way too far with motion blur and make it so the smallest head movements turn your vision into a blurry mess. I don't know about you, but whenever I turn my head it doesn't look like someone smeared Vaseline over my vision, so I don't know why some games go so hard on motion blur effects. Like pretty much everything on this list, we're not saying that motion blur is just inherently bad. If you like motion blur in your games, that's cool. It honestly doesn't bother me most of the time, but a whole hell of a lot of people out there just have no use for motion blur in their games. It's less love it or hate it and more tolerate it or hate it, but either way, motion blur can make a game an ugly mess, especially if you're not able to play at a solid 60 frames per second. Motion blur can make games uglier and it can make it hard to tell what's going on. And again, at worst, it can even make people sick. At number nine is depth of field, which is basically motion blur, but for things that are not moving. This can be a cool effect when used properly, but a lot of games just crank up the depth of field to a kind of ludicrous level to make the game appear more cinematic. Like during cutscenes and stuff, it can look really good. But while you're playing a game, if suddenly 90% of your screen is blurred all to hell, that's when you know the developers went overboard. Like motion blur, instead of making it subtle, they just go crazy with it and it makes the game harder to play. And then some Developers use depth of field as a way to hide pop in or less detailed environments that are further away. And depending on the game, this can look okay or it can look awful. Like pretty much everything on this list, really it's up to the player to decide how tolerable these effects can be. But it's probably safe to say if you hate motion blur, you're not gonna love depth of field either. If you actually wanna see your game, and again, in some cases, if you wanna raise your frame rate, turn this crap off. And number eight is chromatic aberration, an effect that's in pretty much every game now and seems like no one likes it. It's one of these effects that's hard to notice, but once you do, it becomes impossible not to notice. Basically, chromatic aberration is that little halo of red and blue around objects. It's a phenomenon that happens in photography, so its inclusion in games is simple. It supposedly makes games look more cinematic. And like a lot of these fake effects that are there to make a game look more like a movie, it's essentially pointless. It doesn't make the game look better in any measurable way. It's just a stylistic effect that for some reason has been adopted by pretty much every developer out there. I, I, maybe they want to introduce a like slight blurriness to everything to hide some of the imperfections the games have. I, I don't know. But if you get the option of turning this effect off, I, I would suggest taking it. Not every game that has chromatic aberration lets you turn it off though. Sometimes they force you to go through some laborious process to do it and they generally don't make it easy. So if you hate this effect, good luck. So if you're like us and you see this effect all over the place and you're completely done with it, then turn it off if you have the option to. It's not a system hog or anything, so it usually doesn't affect the frame rate at all, but it doesn't add anything to the game either, so just get rid of it. At number seven is Bloom and Lens Flare. Some effects that are less common in games nowadays, but they basically serve the same function as Chromatic Aberration. They're a little visual trick to make a game look more cinematic. The issue is that instead of adding some weird red-blue blurriness to a game, these effects sometimes totally blow out the screen. At its worst, bloom and lens flares will cause a game to blind you with white light constantly. Bloom is meant to imitate the way light glows, while lens flares just imitate the way light reacts when it hits a camera lens. Both of these effects are meant to make a game appear more realistic, but it can often have the opposite effect where it just makes everything look more fake. Both of these effects were, were really common in the Xbox 360-slash-PS3 era, and while most console games didn't let you turn this stuff off, on PC you could, usually. And you'd want to, because around this time developers would go totally crazy with these effects, like anytime you look through a window or around the sun, the whole screen would just get blown out. So if you don't want to look like the sun is exploding in games from this era, just turn it off. At number six is Ultra Shadows. If there's one system hogging setting you can turn off to improve FPS, it's Shadows. This has pretty much been the case since Shadows first appeared in games, but even today it's one of the main settings you can increase FPS with, and usually you don't lose a lot in the process. The higher the settings are for Shadows, the crisper the line on the Shadows. It can look nice depending on the game, but it's almost universally a system hog, and turning down the setting from Ultra to High even can quickly and easily improve frame rates on a lot of games. 
games. Plus, the difference, even at super high resolutions, is usually practically negligible. For a lot of people, the super sharp shadows seen on Ultra are actually less realistic than the more blurry shadows you get on lower settings. It's just unnecessary, and it's something even people who love to play games with the setting cranked to the max often do. Even if everything else is totally maxed out, there's a lot of people out there who just prefer to play with the Ultra shadows turned down. If anything, it's a safe bet to improve your FPS. At number 5 is vignetting and film grain, Bloom and Lens Flare's even uglier and more pointless cousins. It's another pair of settings that are less common these days, but they still pop up from time to time, and yet again, they're an attempt to make a game look more cinematic. If you don't know, vignetting is when there's some darkness around the corners of the screen, while film grain is a simulated grain to make the picture look like it's on film stock. I mean, sometimes it can look kind of cool in something like Silent Hill 2, where it, it does add to like the horror atmosphere, but for a lot of games it can be distracting and even weird. And while I'm sometimes willing to defend film grain, vignetting basically never looks good in a game, it just makes things darker, and often makes the game look cheap. It's just two pretty much pointless effects, and they don't add a lot, other than actually kind of making it more difficult to see, so turn it off if you actually like to see when you're playing a game. And number four is V-Sync. So compared to most of the other junk on this list that most people would gladly turn off, there's a little more debate around V-Sync. Depending on your setup, turning off V-Sync may make your game into an ugly screen tearing mess, or it could make things a lot better as well. Turning this thing off is kind of down to personal preferences and what kind of monitor you have, so the whole thing isn't as straightforward as a lot of the other options on this list. What V-Sync does is it forces the game you're playing to run at the same refresh rate as your monitor. It's good Good because it eliminates screen tearing, which can be pretty severe depending on your system. There's a lot of reasons why you'd want to turn off V-Sync though. For one, it unlocks the frame rate so you can make your game run at a higher frames per second. It also makes your controls more responsive. V-Sync can often introduce some annoying input lag because of the way it works. So turning off V-Sync can generally make the game run better, but if you don't have a monitor that supports something like G-Sync or FreeSync, which can fix screen tearing issues without using V-Sync, then you'll probably get a lot of screen tearing. Those kinds of monitors are nice, but they can be pretty pricey too. So if you're gaming on a budget, then getting a G-Sync compatible monitor might be too much of a luxury. So it really boils down to what you have. Turning off V-Sync is generally better for games, but it can introduce some problems too. And number three is NVIDIA PhysX and NVIDIA Hairwork slash Tress FX. Uh, remember this stuff? Like in games like the Tomb Raider reboot and Witcher 3, they had these fancy hair effects that you could turn on. I mean, they're kind of cool, but at the end of the day, they don't add a lot to the game. Like this is basically just a point for any kind of proprietary NVIDIA effects that aren't like DLSS. Stuff that's basically pointless and isn't really utilized by the game anyway. These hair effects are some of the more obvious ones I can think of now, but there's plenty of goofy things like this in games that are meant to sell graphics cards and that's about it. So yeah, it's kind of a cool novelty to see every strand of Lara's hair like respond to wind, but that's all it is. It's a novelty. It can be a big performance hit too for something that adds so little to the actual experience, so it's usually better to just shut it off. At number two is head bobbing and camera shake. Motion blur and depth of field can be bad, and I've seen plenty of people report these effects make them sick, but head bobbing is so, so much worse. Depending on the game, they can go way overboard with the amount your head moves when you walk around, and like stuff like Minecraft and Stalker are especially bad about this. I never get motion sick playing games, and I even had to turn this stuff off eventually. A more recent phenomenon is the camera shake, which a lot of recent indie games like to throw in. I guess it's supposed to make a game look more intense, but as usual, people just go way too far with it. It's just more effects that rarely add anything to the experience, and if they bug you at all, it's just better to shut them off completely. And finally, at number one, it's mouse smoothing. And I don't know why this exists. Like, everybody knows what it is, and nobody seems to like it, but tons of games have it even today. Even after people have repeatedly complained about this feature in a multitude of different games. Hell, Cyberpunk 2077 had mouse smoothing that you could not normally disable. That is how common mouse smoothing is. And for anyone who is used to playing games on a mouse and keyboard, mouse smoothing is incredibly annoying. When you're playing an F 
FPS, you want one-to-one -one movement from your mouse, and smoothing just makes it harder to aim. And anyone who uses a computer a lot is going to get used to how their mouse works, so some in-game option that changes how responsive the cursor is is going to be something people notice immediately. It's just one of those options that's there because it's always been there rather than for any good reason. And some people are used to it, so it's in games, I guess. We're not even going to talk about my acceleration here. That is a different thing entirely. People have way more polarizing opinions about that. But if you're a gamer, though, then I got to think that for any game you're playing, mouse smoothing is going to need to be turned on. It just feels wrong, and that's not a feeling you want when you're playing a game. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.